Hallo ihr Lieben da draußen heute in Englisch das Ganze und ähm, wir versuchen es einfach mal. Because to, tonight I have as a guest Yalda Yatsdani with me and I'm very happy and uh, proud to have you here. And, Hello. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for inviting dear Saskia. It's a pleasure uh, to be Uh, today with you and talk, we can talk with each other. Yeah. Um, um, Yalda, for the ones who don't know her yet, is uh, based in Berlin, coming from Iran, and she is a music ethnologist, um, writing her PhD in a very uh, on a very interesting issue. She will tell you about that a bit later herself much better than I could do. And she is also a research flow, research flow at the university in Siegen in Germany and the host of two festivals. The first one, um, the female voice of Iran called and the second one um, very currently uh, the female voice of Afghanistan more about that later too and um yeah dear yada i'm always uh, loving to tell our audience and listeners um how we met my guests and i so the the story is needed how we met each other in this lifetime here of course in berlin and um Before we uh, tell you all of this, I will grab my favorite instrument as I usually do, the Körper Tambura from Berlin, Prenzlauer Berg, <laughs> and uh, give you a little musical introduction on that you can listen and float and give yourself some comfortable few minutes to um, tune in and enjoy. I will have to bring it here. So yeah, you could use the chance and say oh, something in between. <laughs> yes, uh, so I think as Saskia said, uh, I, I came to Germany to, to continue my education in the field of music ethnology. And uh, the topic I write is about the women voices and the situation of uh, the singers, female singers in Iran after the Islamic revolution. And of course, we did these two festivals uh, in collaboration with Zeitgeist uh, Genossische Opera Berlin. So, I look, of course, I would like to tell you more. There are a lot of uh, stories. I don't know if, if you have already watched or not, but it's uh, it's good that you they are available online and you can watch it. <laughs> but I will tell you more uh, stories about how we made this. But I think now let's uh, we start with the music. It's good to come in <laughs> to the exactly. story. Yeah, so you can, if you want, you can close your eyes and float a little bit on the sound waves and my voice will come in too. That's also my welcoming of you here, Yalda, in our virtual space of today. Oh, 
And I remember exactly that moment when I'm looking to your um, face and um, light coming from your eyes. I have a direct flashback of the moment when we met each other for the first time at uh, Lilia's place, our common friend and my band colleague, Lilia Keller from Magical Sound. Um, I guess she brought us together, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. And we were sitting in her living room and got to know each other a little more. And my heart flew totally open when I, you know, felt you, saw you, listened to your words and uh, found out more about your, um, yeah, let's say your, your, your vision you are following very straight ahead and um, what you're doing to bring out uh, the female voice out into the world so that it can be uh, uh, heard and seen and felt and its message for uh, all of us. And that felt so uh, close to my heart and so familiar to my spirit and also for my vision or for, yeah, for a lot that I'm here for as I feel and um, what uh, deeply enchants me. And then, um, yeah, you told me, for example, about your very interesting PhD. And um, then I sang a specific song for you that just came by itself, fitting to that moment and to, to our encounter and um, that happiness that uh, was in the room. And now when I looked up after having played the Körper Tambura, I just remembered that moment and that um, oh, vibe, okay. that atmosphere. I was like, ah, wow, yeah, that, that was the moment when it all began. I think it was like three or maybe four years ago, right? 2000, yeah, yeah three years ago, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, for me also, I remember this, uh, maybe, no, I think yeah, three or four years ago, it was exactly the beginning of uh, the time I moved to Berlin. And for me, it was very, really, um like uh, welcoming like really uh, like that mm -hmm. how you were because i was seeing that okay we you're from here from uh, berlin and uh, like the like and we we just met uh first time but how you were curious and open and you like really you wanted to listen more songs <laughs> about iran and we really had really uh, really deep conversation just from mm -hmm. the beginning uh, and connected to each other because I think we have this uh, deep interest and deep uh, wish to know about more about the, the music of different cultures and especially about the women voices. So I really saw that you were so much also into this topic and this direction. 
so naturally we connected uh, very fast uh, straight same yes really mm. it was good very good i never forget this day because it was one of the uh, days i began my life and be, uh, living in belly mm. so it was a very good day <laughs> I even remember, Yada, what you were uh, wearing as clothes on that day. It was a bright, sunny yellow. <laughs> It brought definitely a lot of light inside of the space, inside of the room. Yeah. Yes, and I remember that we played and we, it was that day actually we already decided to let's do something together. And this was very nice and, and it happened. So we really wished for and we came together and we did something together yes it's really the, uh, and that went very quick as i remember huh yeah you, you came up with the idea to do something for the international women's day which is yeah. every year on the 8th of march and this was a very special one because it was for the first time <laughs> in its life it was the 100th birthday of that international International Women's Day, and uh, Yada said, hey, let's do a kind of event or festival or concert on that day, just to give an homage, to honor it, and to, um, yeah, give our reverence, and use a chance to bring together some beautiful uh, female artists together on stage from different cultures, uh, each one bringing her own uh, musical uh, gift, And then we had our fusion after these many different solely soul pieces. We had uh, our ensemble piece and um, had our very special cultural fusion out of these many different, um, yeah. yeah um, Musical colors. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> spices. I remember, I never forget this because really it was uh, because sometimes many times like this kind of programs people they gather before they play before like you know of course but we, we, we knew each other but the improvisation part that it happened that night it was really really live and it was really coming from the our hearts uh, the, the seven women that we were together mm. uh, in that day and I remember that later after that um, some of the audience they were asking that Uh, but you you meet often or you are practicing together? I said, no, actually, we were <laughs> trusting this, uh, that we come together. And this is exactly, we wanted to see how we can make this communication with each other through music, through our uh, voices, through our uh, instruments or any way possible. And it was happening, you know? So it was really, like for me also, was very touching and see that we, seven people from seven different Uh, countries they how we could connect and share our emotions and stories and it was very good really good memory <laughs> absolutely and yeah sorry did you want to say something else no no no, no. <laughs> um and and what what uh, still uh, touches me in a in a uh, yeah in a very um unique way is that I realized despite I have been on stage with other musicians so many times in my life before, but I have never been on stage with so many women and women only. And that shocked me a little bit and it enchanted me at the same time, both. It was like, wow, why did that never happen before? Why is it so rare? Because usually I know the other way around that I'm mostly the only women on stage, only women on stage, and the other colleagues are male or man. Um, yeah. And sometimes there's another woman, but still we are the, the only ones, yeah? And that there are so many different ones, all female and all bringing their kind of female taste and glimpse together in one pot. And one hot soup that was um, for me a premiere. And uh, I had the feeling not only for me <laughs> <laughs> on stage yeah. and in the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It was very uh, like a strong, like that, because all these personalities also like, like uh, Petra, Petra Nachmanova, it was Valentina, Belanova, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that's from Italy, from uh, I think. Petra is Polish, Austrian, like really from many different uh, uh, 
places. Also, the other uh, Anat was from uh, Israel, Tel Aviv. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and so f from really background stories, we were coming together, and it was so nice <laughs> just to cute. connect, just to listen to each other without. And of course, we all speak English, you know. But sometimes it's really, I think, this uh, singing and music is stronger, like mm -hmm. connect than our the languages, you know. So it was very, very nice. Yeah, to connect to each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we had but even the a message was more. Sorry, uh, interrupting. Uh, but the message in general about the women. It's uh, and with in these days because you know that we know that many many women in the history they did a lot <laughs> that we could have this chance and we come like this. So for me, it's always this eighth of March is uh, really important message that we want to continue this way. We appreciate what the other women in different parts of the world till now they have mm -hmm. done and remember it and uh, appreciating it and to also to continue somehow. Exactly. Yeah. And now it's really time um, to introduce you um, after we um, told you out there a little bit about our encounter coming together and creating our first event, which was done the year after as well with other uh, female musicians. And then came Corona and it wasn't possible to go on, but we'll I guess we'll do it as soon as it's possible, sure. maybe next year, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And um, about our second event, the way we play together, we will talk a bit later. But now I would like to, um, yeah, to invite you to say more about, um, for example, that very interesting um, PhD that you're writing on. Sure. And maybe also... Um, combined to it the, the interesting question, how did that all come to you? Or how did you find that specific vision, interest, desire to go for the female voice yeah. out in the world, of course, yeah. to raise your voice so, you know, for it? Mm -hmm. uh, the story started that, you know, because I, I was born in Iran and I grew up in Iran. So I was going for my bachelor of studies. I was uh, at the university in, in a university in Tehran. And uh, I was playing, like I was playing tar that I will show you later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you know it, but just I like to share it with uh, the people who are uh, listening to us. So, and then I started with the instrument, the tar, but uh, many times happened that we wanted to make concerts and uh, to, to share and to share our music or present our music. And there were many other uh, also classmates and, and that they were uh, women and they were singing. And many times they, we wanted to do, and then every time they were not giving us permission that they can come also with us to a stage and uh, to perform. And this, is, uh, this was always this reaction that brought me questions that why, why uh, they don't let them to perform. And this, they have really beautiful voice. They had the same time of rehearsing, practicing, mm -hmm. and uh, how much they are talented and why people can't, the people, uh, they are not allowed to hear them. And, so this question that started from these reactions in the like because of the regulations that you know unfortunately uh, after 1979 they don't let uh, women to sing solo in public spaces in Iran and uh, this this question started and then I thought okay then when there is no opportunity to hear the women voices so I'm sure in a country like Iran that is really huge country like with big population that, that there are so many different ethnic groups living in different parts. So there should be a lot of different ethnicities uh, with their musical culture and uh, colors. So I, so maybe then I don't know anything. So I, because we don't hear it and we don't see it. So I like it. I became curious that who are these women? Who are these voices? And I like to travel. I like to find out. So it was then I started to travel. <laughs> in um, first I started to Shiraz in it's a city near to the south. Um, Iran and there I was looking for lullabies and for the working songs of the women and then really from that time my life suddenly was so changed it was 2009 that I saw okay it's so interesting world it's unbelievable like how uh, different kind of music is exist and that we don't know even the people inside Iran we, we don't know about it because 
radio, television, they don't show any women voice or any, there is no kind of ch way that we hear. And that time there was no still these social channels like what we have now, for example, access about Instagram or Facebook. At that time there was really rare people um, using internet or like, and then I saw, okay, then, uh, I mean, it was new still, internet there was, but not really very common for everyone to use. And then, uh, so I thought, okay, and then I saw these women, most of them, like they had uh, real stories to say from how they make their music. And, the, and most of them, they were uh, not going to music schools or like music institutes or like, and they were singing very pure melodies. And all, when, when, when I was asking them, how do you know this? They were saying, okay, I, just by nature or just what I hear. Like one, when I'm creating crafts or carpets, for example, uh, I, it comes to my mind, this naturally, this melodies. And, and then I was really um, touched and inspired to say, how possible? So this question and questioning, it was made me that from 2019 now, <laughs> that's more than 10 years, I keep traveling because every trip I go in different regions, I found, I find new uh, music it's like treasure it's mm. and you can't stop it you know because the more you go the more you deep you see how uh, beautiful and they are different to each other and uh, you, it's possible to find out about it about the stories of these women and how music exists uh, every day in their life you know so for example in big cities we in, rural, um, in uh, urban areas we see People are just playing music, just if it's for a stage, or they make it like a, a lot of rehearsals, <laughs> like uh, different facilities and like uh, sound techniques. And, but, and we, but we see that when we enter their daily life, we don't see so much. We don't feel the music in like some sometimes. But in some regions, I must say that they have really just the basics of the. Like, like even their living style, how simple they keep it, and but how rich they are in their music style and music singing and techniques, and mostly it's just by their nature. So because they have the opportunity to uh, to enjoy, like to to feel the nature, they are because they live in the mountains. They are nomads, and like they really close, connected still to the nature, and how they can create their own techniques, their own songs. And they tell the stories, different ly lyrics. It's it's so touching, like really. For them, some uh, some uh, was very interesting for me. That actually the documentary that we are currently working on it, it's about the Qashqai uh, tribe, that they make uh, carpets, and in these carpets they create uh, like some patterns. And these patterns, like like in the past, they were putting some. Uh, like in the, sorry, uh, today they put some. Uh, patterns and they based on this they weight the carpet but in the past they there was there was not this printing and like uh, photos to put in front and to base on that to paint they were everything was happening in their mind and their Im imagination mm -hmm. so they were creating these colors and these patterns that we see in the carpets the, in the like older carpets and most of these women, this woman of this tribe, they were saying while they were making these patterns, the melodies also were coming like it. So it's connected, this rhythm of waving and also singing like this. It, they were saying it was connected. They could be also through mm -hmm. emotion, through the stories they create this. And also this feeling of creation, you know, giving uh, life to the creatures, to the crafts and what they do with their hands and their voice also the, so mm. this is really beautiful to see and so i, I i'm still traveling this uh, this nomadic culture is for me is really um, beautiful and now i say at the moment we are working on a documentary about this uh, nomadic culture and the women voices mm. so this uh, this is something that yes i i never could stop <laughs> and to go on mm. and yes Every every yeah. region they have their own character and the stories about behind the songs, and it shows how much we are actually as a collective, as a global collective, lacking this knowledge, this uh, wisdom, and this part of um, 
mm, yeah, uh, of reality, let's say. Yeah, the, the female mm, aspect, not only of life, but also of creation, how it unfolds in many, many different ways and beautiful ways and creative ways, all kinds of creativity. Um, like you say, like that weaving certain um, carpets and combined with singing. I know it from indigenous tribes from the Amazon, exactly like you tell, told us um, in, in that um, same sense, weaving certain textures, certain clothes, certain jewelry combined with certain song structures and at the same moment connecting with themselves and with a spirit that is kind of guiding them through through that creative uh, procedure and um, I think we all know it and in in the western field of science there was one day a new name for that old phenomena called flow when you are into that state of trance while doing something very deeply connected and then you feel like out of time and space and feel totally blissful and enjoying what you are doing. May it be singing, may it be weaving or painting or all of it together. And then yeah. you feel very close to the source of creation and you actually are. And then uh, yeah, creation is showing itself and, and, and um, using us as, as a kind of channel to we give something to the world uh, that can be seen and shown and um, listened to. And at that moment, I feel like um, saying something and inviting uh, us uh, for a um, common piece of creation <laughs> called music. And it's a song that was not written by us, but of course we, we do interpret it as our own piece, uh, despite it is written and sung originally by Bob Dylan, one of the greatest singer-songwriters um, ever. And uh, he wrote it in the 60s of the last century. And it is uh, many times uh, sung at events, let's say, where it's much about change about um, our evolution as human beings, where we feel like we have to go on from that point we are at to evolve and to, yeah, just to um, unfold in, in the best way um, possible. And at that moment we performed it together was at the big official celebration of these 100 years International Women's Day and 100 years of the possibility to vote politically and to be voted in Germany. And that was 1919, right? When we had that invitation, which was a great honor. And actually you invited me to do it together with you. And um, we did that at a very historical place in Potsdam the huge Barberini now museum, uh, originally built as a kind of palace um, of, uh, of the former king. And um, then this palace, very much in the center of the city, became the first place in Germany where women could go and vote, give their voices, raise their voices, uh, and to be voted themselves. And so we were invited to perform there to give we give in our music um, and to accompany the whole event and the many speeches uh, by a lot of people who did do um, yeah did do a lot to to uh, support the female voice in the world, in politics and society and culture and so on. And uh, they had this wish that we interpret this song by Bob Dylan, the times they are changing. And I will take my guitar 
Emma was, and the other will take her <laughs> uh, instrument. And you could also use the chance now to give a little introduction on, on it. Because oh, okay. <laughs> I guess many will not really know it yet here. Sorry. This is a uh, Tor, Persian Tor, you can say. <laughs> and no, uh, Tor in uh, Persian actually means a string. So that's why you hear a lot of instruments with the word Tor, like guitar or sitar. <laughs> it's always connected to this Tor, the word, uh, like very old uh, Persian word. But this, uh, this instrument, like I always say, like this, we say, uh, is coming from, uh, we say, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, it's from different kind of animals like this is but i tell you but the reason like uh, this, this is the skin of the sheep this is the, the um, uh, horns of the wild goat and the, the white part is the bones of the camel and the, um, the threads also natural this the veins of the cow and the, the wood is mulberry tree and the hand is Walnut tree, and the reason oh. that I said fortunately, unfortunately, is that it's animals, but fortunately, it it's really feels a little bit live. You feel that there is a soul, and and they don't make many out of this. They maybe four to three or four per year, because they make it by hand, and the wood should be really takes time until in the right uh, form <laughs> that they do it by hand. <laughs> So yes, I'm glad to. Uh, of course, I, I, uh, it's difficult to uh, this piece to play it the same as, as uh, it's the main piece. But it's just my feeling towards this piece that I play. I like to accompany Saskia. <laughs> mm. So yes. Yeah, yeah. That will give us an introduction and an outro, and I will sing and play in between. What Bob Dylan wrote about change and how the times they are changing. If you if you really want to go on and not to be stuck in a in an old place where, yeah, the wind is now a different one. So Saskia, I will start, but I will give you the continuation. Please, you <laughs> go on to. Tell the story till the end. But yeah. I will start. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Gather around people wherever you roam And admit that the waters around you have grown And accept that soon you'll be drenched to the bone 
If your time to you is worth saving, then you better start swimming while you sing like a stone. For the times they are changing For the times they are changing Can writers and critics who prophesize with your pen And keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again And don't speak too soon, cause the wheel's still in spin. And there's no telling who that it's naming. For the loser, I'll be elated to win. For the time they are changing. For the time. Come, Senators, Congressmen, please hear the call. Don't stand on the doorway, don't block up the hall. For he that gets hurt will be he who has stolen. There's a battle outside in the street and soon shake your windows and rattle your walls The time they're changing The times they're changing Come mothers and fathers throughout the land and don't criticize what you can't understand your sons and your daughters are beyond your command your old road is rapidly aging please get out of the new one if you can land for the times they're changing, for the times they're changing. The light is drawn, the curtain is cast. The slow one now will be later. It's a present now, will later be past, and the first one now. The art is rapidly fading. The first one now will later be last. The times the change. Times the world The times there are It's a Yeah, if you want, you could also let it be in or let it end with your outro on the tar again. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you so much. <laughs> mm. I just really, uh, every time it's nice to play with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For me too, <laughs> with you. And I guess also for the people there at the Barberini Palace in 2019 for that huge uh, event where politicians uh, gave speeches and uh, yeah, very important people from uh, yeah. culture and society. Um, for them, I mean, they for sure they knew the song, but not in that version, you know, not with that. Um, Uh, that spirit coming from your culture and background and uh, ours coming together, these different yeah, spices uh, becoming one and uh, uh, making something bigger out of that um, uh, song. And uh, yeah, it's like I see sun and moon, you know, like kind of opposing <laughs> complementary qualities. Mm -hmm own impression is really not just through this song but I what I listen is not some people I think that you need to play the same melody or something no, but it's, it's more my own impression towards this song yeah exactly yeah, yeah. also connected to you to you yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and now it's um, because you you already gave us uh, the link the, the the link for the bridge to your um, musical sphere, where you are coming from, and you are working uh, for and with, especially for the female voices coming from that region, who have that challenge or the problem, as you already said, for bringing out their voices on stage, out to the public, as I am able to do it here. Um, there it's uh, much, much more complicated and uh, yeah sometimes impossible maybe and uh, so you have um, out of that fact and situation you have created um, a festival to give them the option to do it anyhow and uh, one is called the female voice of iran and the other one which came later the female voice of afghanistan and um The last one, the female was of Afghanistan, just took place in a, <laughs> do, you, do you know, <laughs> out there? <laughs> um, Yada um, definitely knows That's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we could not believe, uh, you know, of course, not Afghanistan because it's our neighbor country. And for me, also the continuation of discovering, I, I always also wanted to also know what's happening in, just near the border in our end. So I asked my this long uh, collaborator, Andreas Rochel, to travel together also to Afghanistan. And uh, but we were not believing that in just two three weeks after we come back in July 2021, it was just like this uh, issue of Taliban happens, and so we had really pressure for on us uh, about the situation of the women there and. So it was much worse situation now. It's not issues of forbidden or not forbidden. They were really in the danger of their lives uh, because they were musicians. But it was very interesting for us, uh, for me, that they were so strong. And then they said, no, even in this situation, we, we still want to go on and we want to, our voices can be heard. So, because we were thinking, okay, what happens? Um, do, shall we do the festival now in this condition of Afghanistan? And they said, all they said, yes, actually, we want our voices be heard this time. And so, um, uh, of course, uh, we are in contact with them. They are all fine. Most of them, they have already exit the country, but it was um, this knowing about these uh, stories and this uh, strong personalities of these women in Afghanistan for me, was also opened new doors and new inspiration that like a different level of the situation, what, what it means to, um, um, what we are talking about, what, what it means to be in like this level of danger and still you want to uh, fight for music, fight for expressing your, uh, um, I mean, not fight for music, I mean, for your rights 
to play music mm-hmm. and to, to express also. This was different kind of level of um, strength that I could see in the people and uh, the, the, all the musicians, but also we, especially women in Afghanistan was very um, strong also and inspiring for me to see. Mm. I, I think all the, uh, also I like to share that the people, they can watch it all, the concerts, all the um, documentary, you can find it in the cross-generation media, the YouTube channel. They can find all the concerts that we recorded in Kabul, uh, and also their stories of the women, everything is online. You so can find it, it uh, the YouTube, cross-generation? Cross-generation media. Is the Media. Name of the channel, yes. But also they can just search female voice of Iran or female voice of Afghanistan. Of course, they find it as well, yes. All right. Yeah. And your colleague, Andreas Rochol, uh, from Zeitgenössische Oper Berlin, and you traveled for several months each time to prepare a festival in Berlin to uh, search and find the singers and in Iran, yes. yeah, and, and invite them. You also traveled in Afghanistan, yeah? And, and yeah, did for Iran, like. it was mm-hmm. uh, me for the doc- like we traveled for five years in different times uh, to meet the different women in, dif- because in different regions and to uh, record their music and make uh, um, make some uh, por- like the portraits. And in 2019, also um, with Andreas Rukhol, also other colleague Sebastian Leitner, t- three of us, and we were in Iran, and then mm-hmm. also we complete the whole version, the complete version of the uh, the documentary film of Female Voice of Iran. Mm. But for Afghanistan, it's uh, we just made our first trip. <laughs> but uh, these things happened, so I don't know how we can continue. But uh, anyhow, till, till now, we could uh, meet some very uh, nice women and musicians that we could make, uh, record their uh, concerts and their stories. But Hopefully, it can continue as well in different ways. So you did a very important job, huh? And um, did a lot for, for them and for the whole thing, uh, which goes beyond Afghanistan and Iran uh, and Germany. I would say the whole world. It's a global issue to, to raise awareness and to give space for the female voice and its message and its uh, beauty, wisdom and depth and what it has to give, can give to life um especially in, in the situation now because we know we challenge uh, or, or we face a tremendous challenge uh, going on 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 mother planet earth uh, with the whole destruction of our natural resources and so on and it was just uh, too long uh, too much time that we as humanity spent to oppress the voice and to not listen to it and um so it was very beautiful and <laughs> kind of yeah, magically synchronized to hear. Um, I will not remember, I will not forget that as well. Uh, when I heard for the first time that you are planning to do uh, the next festival for the Female Voices of Afghanistan. Um, I think that was last year, right? When we talked about it, beginning of last year, yeah. And at the same time, I was working without knowing that Yalda is working on the female voice of Afghanistan, I worked on the kind of same issue together with my colleague yes. from uh, Catalonia, uh, an, author, an author, writer who did write uh, a lot of uh, tremendous books, um, novels which always uh, feature political and historical events and issues of humanity, mostly concerning Uh, the human rights situation and in this case it was um, a book called The Silenced Cry uh, which is exactly telling um, the situation of the women in Afghanistan under the um, influence of the Taliban and how their voices were completely silenced or so strongly oppressed that their whole um, yeah life lives and, and, and their um, expression was not possible to 
to give voice to and to be heard outside or inside of their own culture. And um, so Anna Tortajara, this uh, author and I um, are still working on that uh, project to bring it on stage, that piece, but we are now in good company collaborating with the Bühne für Menschenrechte, uh, an English uh, stage for human rights, yeah, yeah, who are specialized for these issues and to bring them as a kind of performance on stage. And uh, we're super very happy about that. And it's, yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's um, on the one hand side, it's hard work, as you know, to, to dive deeper into these heavy, uh, stories and uh, human experiences of course. Uh, and and the opposing forces who are attacking um, the the female um, voice and everything around and at the same time it's a it's a great chance to bring more light into that yeah. dark and hidden corner um, to yeah, to give more freedom and more space and the chance to be heard, um, which uh, is forced to be silent, uh, which is neither uh, beautiful nor um, helping us at all because we need it. We need to, 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 to listen to it and we need to hear what it has to say. And we need to feel, I would say, what it can bring us to be touched in a way that moves us in a direction of, mm, I would say, making life more beautiful and deep and rich and uh, harmonious, balanced uh, for a real state of peace on earth, for be, being really able to communicate uh, instead of um, going into war against each other and to build bridges to bring a deeper understanding and uh, welcome the differences that we have as wealth, not as problems. Yeah. And um, also, hmm? I'm sorry. And also like the, just the importance of these stories or this voices ahead that because really it's, we don't, uh, generalize like a topic or something that what we hear in our news channels or like that they mm -hmm. just focus on the politics or what's happening but this is really these stories and this voices are really individual like from like directly from the women so and this that's why it's important like to be here and like because it's really direct you we, we hear just the people that who were there and part like they tell their story so i always say it's, these stories are more understandable maybe when we hear just one story at them to not to generalize the situation of a country and it's very complex to understand and to feel it from far but to maybe listening to one person or two person like they really directly it's always i think opens up more more about uh, what's going on and what is happening in their life and this is this is very important to open up and listen to the people Absolutely, yeah. And Anna, my um, colleague and uh, writer of the book, she did it as well, uh, like traveling there in 2000 uh, with a high risk of uh, being threatened yeah, uh, or attacked uh, under life threat, you could say. And she did it undercover with the help of many very courageous um, people working for organizations for human rights in the underground, many women uh, who did that job hidden uh, for uh, human rights and female rights and um, yeah, just gave it all and showed her and told her what's up, what's, what's the case because at that time you didn't find any information in the media and then she wrote that book and it became a bestseller and uh, she uh, war, has been invited to, to the Spanish parliament and, and um, 
uh, monarchy into the king's house to speak about her experiences and the stories she was told the experiences of the afghan people and Af on the of the afghan women as you did very similar uh, and then she she wrote it all into that book and uh, after that book the silence cry there came that uh, monologue of a an afghan women woman uh, And this figure that she created is uh, not a real one, but every, everything she's telling in that monologue about her life's experience throughout the whole time with the Taliban and before uh, were real stories that she uh, got from people who experienced themselves. And it's hard stuff. It's really hardcore, but um, very important to be told and to be uh, heard, to be listened to. And uh, we will, um, or we are creating a, a performance where music, my music and the dance of a dancer and um, uh, the performance of one actress and the pictures, the photos and um, installation of a photographer, all female ones are coming together, melting into one another and portraying and yeah, telling that story. Also that nightmare, what happens if the female voice is oppressed in such a hard way. But we also want to show the other side, the kind of light side or the, the vision that we as a utopia have on mind and in our hearts to not only to give hope and to discuss the possibility or to feel the possibility what could be if it would be otherwise, if it would be different and turn into a transformational process where we end up in a, or we are heading to a greater freedom of speech, of, um, development, a free development of, um, uh, yeah, more rights and uh, participation. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Huh? Yeah, no? Of course, it's very important, yes, to continue mm. and to see how we can go on and co collaborate with each other and connect with each other because Most of these women now, they decided to immigrate uh, to other countries and it's really hard the time also to start again everything from the beginning. And so it's very important that we all connect to each other and to see what we can do also further in future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. I absolutely, totally agree. And um, again, a lot of gratefulness from me to you And Thank yeah, Thank and and to to uh, men like Andreas who are such a strong um, support and um, bright light into the whole process because we we cannot do it on our own as uh, women. We really need uh, the support, the help, the brilliance of strong, courageous men who um, yeah are able to open their heart to that issue and. Um, um, have the wisdom or at least try to understand why it's so of such an importance to bring that up uh, i think it's really it's, it's just importance i mean it is about like the, it could be man woman together or doesn't matter for my uh, idea is more the humans we are so like now for example like andreas or the other humans like yourself like, like the people who are open like to, to discover when they come together they always can do something <laughs> so it doesn't matter which gender are they it's more important that they but how they are open to discover and to go for it to really in real life not to just as an idea but just to really try to do something uh, in the what we can do <laughs> and then it's possible it can they really can be it doesn't matter which gender <laughs> they are in my view absolutely yes, yes. a a man a woman <laughs> and, 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 uh, it's more to do together because mm -hmm. yes i believe 
alone as one person is difficult. Doesn't matter man, woman, or other genders. It's more to come together to do something. It is collaboration together and understanding. And this is this always opens doors. Like there is this. Uh, we had this woman uh, in, in south of Iran. Uh, she was saying an example in Persian that one hand doesn't have sound, but two hands that it comes together and has a sound. Um, the more hands comes together, we have more sound. So it's this is just an example, <laughs> like to imagine, like the more we connect, the stronger we, we, we can be and to go on. We can be and we become, yeah? we even become stronger become, than we have yeah. been before. To do something, yeah. but we, that's mm. important. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and we, as two examples, we can, I'm pretty sure, sense it within ourselves that we become stronger with each step. May it be little, but with each of these little steps, we sure. feel that the power or the, the strength within is growing. And that is such a beautiful feeling. I'm really um, appreciating and, and I'm really grateful for that chance yeah. personally as well for my own okay. growing process and yeah, development. And, 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 you know, to see it within you and to, to um, yeah, to, to see how this bright light can shine on all of us and through all of us is just a, a huge blessing of life if we use the chance yeah. to let it um, grow. And what comes to my mind as a strong question, as something that makes me very curious, and I'm sure not only myself, Uh, but how did you feel? How do you feel, Yada, through all these challenges, these journeys, these dangerous situations, these risks that you took on yourself? Um, because it's not easy and yeah. because it's not all legal and normal and uh, officially good in, in the context of politics and, um, yeah, um, the issues of societies concerning uh, the human rights situation and, the, and especially the, the female rights situation. Have you ever been fearful or how do you deal with your fear and with uh, these uh, feelings of insecurity and uh, adventure, which is not only and always a positive, exciting one, but you, yeah, of course you're, you're crossing borders and boundaries and therefore you you have to deal with these moments of getting out of the comfort zone and um, getting through the fear. And uh, how do you yeah, do that yeah, yeah, of course. as a modern heroine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always, you know, there is this, um, of course, there are some uh, uh, limitations. There are some like, uh, it's, uh, but you know, I don't know, it's just, something really strong inside the motivation i don't know how to describe it mm -hmm. but something is always inside is uh, motivates me and push me that no it's i, I it's like i feel that uh, i like to find out it's so important for me i like to uh, because for example uh, i was in berlin uh, sitting okay to of course we go through the three four months i was looking for the singers to find them in afghanistan for example but But I was thinking, okay, after three months, four months, finally I could talk to them, even just on the phone. And But we find, we could connect to each other, we could find each other, because I didn't know anybody in Afghanistan. It was from really zero we start to to find out people. And of course, there was only, I had uh, I have a very good friend, uh, Shamila Hashemi, that she's in Berlin. She helped me, of course, a lot. But I mean, through, I didn't know any musician there or any um, connection. And, so for me, it was so important. I said, okay, it's not easy to just sit here uh, like thousands of kilometers far and I talk about <laughs> music and culture of somewhere else, you know, that I, I thought it's so important to meet them and to so to understand them and also to be also in this situation to understand more. So this traveling and really going to this situation is so important that encourage a lot like motivate a lot that i need to go on so mm. and i trust the people you know when i really just when i ask them like okay 
I want to come to see you. I want to come to see you, listen to you. Say, Shall I come or not? And most of them, they were very welcoming. And they were saying, yes, in that time, even it was just a few, two, three weeks before these things happened in Afghanistan, people were very welcoming us and to say, no, you come and do this. And of course, there were not ten many tensions. There were already Taliban in other cities, but people, it was for me very also a strange feeling that but people are keeping their life, no? For them, it's like, but of course it's sad because it's, you see that this violence and this sometimes people have to accept it to keep their life, to survive and to go on. But they don't, because if they want to think about it daily, then they can't live anymore. So they, they, they you could feel that the violence was strongly, could feel in the city or so but but still also there are many also positive sides in the middle of this violence was happening like this this so this was like this conf, conf, so in this conflict strongly i think it's it's the life what we see mm -hmm. again we, we have to always look for the balance and how we can go on and uh, not get covered and disappointed by negativity and the violence more mm. to see even little hope little positivity we go for it and it opens the door it's there is uh, always a way and that's why i trust uh, this way and to go uh, less to when the, i see there is a voice it's saying coming we can meet we can talk i go i go and i trust the way and i think it works until now, I don't know, not that I want to say, but till now, it's the, the, uh, many situations uh, about the conditions, limitations, political connection, uh, uh, limitations, all the things. I had always this, uh, but till now, no, nothing, because I think it's clear that the, the focus is, my focus is more mainly on music and culture, so till now, always was okay. The people always supported and helped and Till now was okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm strong, uh, hopeful I still also for the future that it can go on. Mm. Yeah, it uh, feels like as if you are kind of guarded or protected, you know, ah, yes, you from said inside and out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you feel that? It's actually, you know, of course that I was unconsciously feeling it, but when the time that you told me about this, mm -hmm. for me, actually, really, honestly, I say it was. Always it, it comes to my mind and it's, I think that, yes, <laughs> there is, a, there is mm. the good energy, you know, the good energy of mm. the humans and the stories is there. And mm. that motivates, that encourage, that opens the door and um, welcoming the yeah. something is coming and connection, create connections more and more. This is, I yes, I really deeply believe from my heart, yes. Yeah, it opens the door to the hearts uh, and to the mind and to the spirit and that creates a, a strong resonance huh? mm, between yeah. you and the other and the, and the others mm. and that leads to wonderful cooperation so far yeah yeah very touching results uh, and impressive ones yeah so let's continue huh? this uh, <laughs> choices yes. that we that we make on a daily basis in a way because I, I find myself very much into what you are saying about your own feelings uh, referring to that question I know it very well that uh, when others say aren't you um, afraid uh, doing this or that which seems to be risky um, I feel like you I feel the need I feel the urge I feel the desire to follow that path because it leads to something that feels important and just right, just um, yes. uh, bringing up something that is tremendously important and good and nourishing, uh, something essential. And then the fear is, doesn't have the chance to become so loud and, and the, the natural strength or courage coming from the heart is much louder, <laughs> it's much yes. more intense and is also a kind of protection. Yeah. And the inner voice, no? the inner guidance is yeah. also quite important. Yeah. 
And that's what I what my, my experience is here to work with uh, the female voices of women, because that's part of my work too, to give um, uh, a specific workshop which has that title, the female voice or the depth of the female voice. Uh, because I mean, we are living here in Germany uh, on the Western world, definitely uh, at a place of this mother earth uh, territory where it's uh, much easier to bring up your uh, female voice or the, your voice as a, as a woman. Uh, but still we have uh, a long history where it wasn't uh, so easy and possible and very challenging as well. And in, 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 in certain ways it still is. So we don't have uh, the full um, yes. salvation or something because we still have um, our um, tasks and uh, challenges. And it's very interesting to see for me when I'm giving these workshops, how much of that old trauma or old shadow is still there, still within the voices of women. Yeah. And um, how much work has to be done to free that full... Um, around something called female voice, female power, um, self-worth or self-confidence and uh, everything that is needed to step up, step forward and to say, hello, yeah. it's me and I'm using the chance to be heard and to be yeah. seen and to express myself freely. And that's the choice of every individual um, being here. And also of the man to to um, to reconnect themselves with that female aspect within themselves and and to give it a voice too because uh, we are all kind of in the end the same and different and um, uh, that's also uh, a wonderful chance to uh, come together and to co-create what's. Yeah, what's in, in store, what do we have as potentials and to, to um, use it uh, for the best possible way for everybody and um, whole creation. Whole creation yeah. And I'm just reminded of that uh, song that we also performed at that uh, fest act in Barberini on the 100th uh, birthday of the International Women's Day yes. in front of all these uh, yeah, uh, people and uh, politicians. And it was that first um, female election song from 1911 written in German by a um, journalist and politician, the, well, one of the very first female politicians who got elected, who got voted, and um, had to fight quite a bit to reach there, to, to really take uh, the chance in the place and get the seat. Mm, I think um, almost 500 men and, and, and six women in one parliament at that time, 1918 um, or 19. <laughs> and uh, the song, is um i don't know how how well known it is today but we definitely got to know it because we had the the task to perform it there and uh it says a lot about the whole issue and about about the 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 speciality that it's not only about women and uh women's rights but that it's for as you said for men and women and everyone in between and kids, of course, as well, because uh, as it is said in the chorus of the song, our um, freedom frees you, dear man. So please, um, yeah, let's try together. It's not against you, it's for you and it's with you, hopefully. And uh, I really appreciate these wise, loving words. Uh, because it's not about separation or oppression, vice versa, but it's really about um, a reconciliation and um, yeah, 
singing together, <laughs> singing, dancing together and enjoying our common creation. And I'm just grabbing for my drum. Here it is, my frame drum, a shaman's drum uh, made in Berlin. Yeah, um, I used it there to accompany that song. Uh, from 1911 by Therese Schlesinger. She was the one who wrote it. And um, yeah, Yalda had her drum too. Uh, a drum called Bombo from Argentina, a huge one. And in the end of the event, the two of us uh, went at the, um, in front of the crowd with our drums drumming loudly through that palace all the stairs down to the hall, uh, followed by the whole crowd. And then um, on the first floor, we um, let it uh, end up there with a huge installation, mm. a kind of statue symbolizing Mother Earth. And everyone who was there, who was present could um, do a little part to um, decorate her with colorful um, pieces of paper in, in many different colors. And you could write on them your desire, your wish, your vision, what you are um, seeing and wanting to see in the world in the future that begins now. And I'm pretty sure these women in 1911, when the song was written, um, which led up to that first uh, free election in 19, um, 19 uh, had kind of a similar feeling and different as well. Because uh, we have definitely now another situation than they had. And as a little homage and out of that respect and um, gratefulness for their hard work and their courage. I would like to perform it now for you with my drum. And I just need the lyrics because it's quite a lot of, oh, well, quite a lot of words in German. And hopefully you can understand something, maybe everything. Lernen uns ihr Frauen ist die Reihe, so kämpfen jetzt für unser Recht. Drum ein Gesinn uns Mut verleihe, so sei nicht mehr ein Schwachgeschlecht. Dass unsere Würde leichter sei, dass unseres Lebens Glück gedeih, dass unsere Mühen Segen bringen, das ist das Ziel, nach dem wir ringen. Die Gerechtigkeit sagt an, geh frei die Bahn für Kind, Frau und Mann, denn es geht uns alle an. Um unsere Kinder Brot zu rauben, um eure Morde zu erhöhen, wir wollen's länger nicht erlauben und darum fest zusammenstehen für Frieden, Wohlfahrt, Wissenschaft, Gesundheit, Glück, Lebenskraft, wir wollen unsere Stimmen erheben, drum müsst ihr uns das Wahlrecht geben. Die Gerechtigkeit führt an, geht frei die Bahn für Kind, Frau und Mann. Es geht uns alle an. 
Die, die neue Welt gebären aus unserem mütterlichen Schoß. Wir wollen unsere Kinder lehren, zu kämpfen um ein besseres Los. Bis sie erlöst von Qual und Not, erschauen wir Freiheit morgen rot, um unser Leiden fort genießen. Das Erbe, das wir ihnen ließen. Die Gerechtigkeit sagt an, geht frei die Bahn. Es geht uns alle an. Ihr Männer, stehe uns zur Seite heraus, wer noch gerecht sich nimmt. Wir helfen euch in euren Streite, wenn er auch noch so heißen brennt. Nun müsst ihr eure Hilfe uns leihen, soll uns der Preis gewonnen sein. Wir wollen entschlossen Vorwärts dringen, bis wir vereint im Sieg erringen. Die Gerechtigkeit führt an, gebt frei die Bahn für Kind, Frau und Mann, denn es geht uns an. Just reminding their um, memory. Because <laughs> yeah. we were practicing, I remember we said with uh, about 10, 15 languages, we said this, this song, yeah, in different yeah. languages. Yeah, exactly. That was a great idea by, by, by the hosts huh, of the event, by these uh, yeah. uh, special women who invited us and um, organized it exactly. in Potsdam. Um, and the sentence that we uh, sung and uh, said and shouted out to the drumming of our drums while going through the hall and yes. through the whole house and, and with a crowd leading the crowd were like, die Hälfte der Welt gehört uns. In English, uh, half of the world is ours. And then we, did say it in so many different languages. In 15, you said it, huh? right? Yeah. yeah, I think it was 15. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And we had to learn them, huh? These sentences in these many languages, yeah, I remember. I remember, I practiced some. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I asking many friends, well, what is this in Italian, Polish, <laughs> Persian, Arabic, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Russian. Mm -hmm. Russian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a huge issue that we are dealing with, huh, Yada? And we could, I get, yes. I'm pretty sure, uh, talk about it for some uh, weeks. <laughs> yes. But now we have to really come uh, yeah. to our end, to find a good end. And I don't know how you feel, but I feel like I really want to say from the depth of my heart, thank you to our mothers, especially, and uh, to our grandmothers and to all um, women who, who made it possible that we stand here and that we can yeah. stand like we do. And of course, all our fathers and grandfathers and men as well who, who encouraged that and uh, who are encouraging still and supporting Me because, too. I'm very yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. 
and uh, everyone who who is here present and aware of that what yeah. um, is needed and is bringing his or her love into the whole procedure that we can yeah. thrive yeah. Mm. Yes. thank you so much Oh, thank mm -hmm. you so much for inviting and uh, to make this conversation together. And yes, I like that if the if anybody who li is listening to our talk or watching, if you of course you can contact me always and uh, to uh, Saskia or find me <laughs> uh, somewhere if you have questions still about this topic or you like to know more or I'll always you are all very welcome to contact and. Uh, ask your further questions of course yeah and i will i will um uh, put links for connecting you yeah, um, sure. your contact and the website and so on in the info text um, that you can find um at the bottom of the video <laughs> and okay. um thanks to andreas rochol as well you're here with us in our hearts <laughs> and um, thank you for doing yes. such a great job together with Yada and yes, our yes. vision, your vision. We are a team <laughs> yeah. together, yes. Also Sebastian, like really we are, uh, we really this is the possible only because we are working as a team. Otherwise, it's too hard <laughs> to make it possible, yeah. Yeah, and all the great women we could Cooperate so far with our female arts crossing cultures like Lyria, yeah, yeah. like Zelda, yeah. and all of you. Uh, mm -hmm. And Some we. Of them actually, they were part of our festival, like Valentina and Petra, they were part of our festival also. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> and you can watch the movie, of course, the documentary <laughs> about the female yeah. voice of Iran. And uh, what else to say, Yada? Something else? Do you want to play something in the end, maybe? And say, sing, <laughs> uh, play, whatever? No, no, maybe next time. <laughs> okay. Maybe next time, because it's also getting a bit late. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow I travel. I'm actually going to uh, I'm making a panel this weekend uh, um, in Vomax. It's also a panel in Porto. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow I will travel to Porto for this panel so I'm just looking forward to this experience also <laughs> yes about which issue I, I will uh, focus more uh, about the uh, female voices in Afghanistan okay all right yeah. so have a great uh, speech talk uh, thank you participation there greetings <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah Thanks a lot to you here who listen to us. Um, yeah, thanks everyone. For listening. Yeah. yeah. And see you. See you soon. See you. Bye. Here or there or everywhere. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks. <laughs>